I know we have great faith in our government, and yes, we do, but it is run by humans that have just like you would, you know, get a get a car that has a not too good a part and it would fail later and you would be stuck on the side of the road wait, waiting for a tow truck. So here is an opportunity for us to notice, excuse me, notice things in our lives. <clears throat> and we're now noticing that the news is more of a program, a news news program. It's it's constructed, it's very well laid out, and it's done in 30 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've all seen, I guess you could say, gangster movies from the olden days, uh, mafia movies, and so on and so forth. And in those movies, you learn that uh, when one gang is going to take over another gang's property, they have meetings in the back room with uh, cigars and whiskey and women, and uh, uh, that's how they run their their quote unquote company. It's no different in what is happening in the world today. A lot of governments have to make deals with other governments for their country to survive, or have food, or have gas, or, or energy, and so our the way we live is changing. And hopefully at some point in time, we'll, I guess you could say, wise up and see, you know, what's going on and hopefully be able to come up with a game plan that's a benefit for all. Thank you. Well, Claudia, would would you think that, you know, there's a couple organizations that uh, some people have have looked at and they think they're kind of like – a behind the scenes uh people that kind of run the run the world and you have the you have the uh like the committee of 300 and you have all these different secret groups do you suppose that that they are run, they are reptilian or run by reptilians or you know high level connections with the reptilians and uh yeah. how do you think that how is it that they rule the planet Yes, they are. There are many secret societies that we have all seen in the news and read in the magazines or newspapers or, or uh, of, of secret meetings, secret gatherings, and why uh, some some football teams win the World Series, some baseball teams or soccer teams win a particular match, and it propels them upward into stardom and fame. What happens is that there are still in control of us, uh, uh, I'm going to say extraterrestrials, that know how to manipulate us and get us to do certain things that we normally wouldn't do. Uh, Players can be coerced into winning or losing a game because they are uh, held at, I'm going to say gunpoint, uh, something will happen to a family member, and uh, they'll tell them that something's, this person is going to die on a certain day, and it happens. But only the, the person being coerced knows about it. And it, the, the suggestion is given, you say anything, next will be your son, daughter, whatever. And yes, not all of this is reported because it doesn't have any incidents. The, right now, the funeral of the Bush Sr. was set up to allow certain parties to be put into positions of power and authority over us. And it was because so much evidence has been collected uh, secretly by many important groups that uh, like David Icke and David Wilcock have said on public forums that, look, everything you see is not as, as you believe it to be. It is be. You are being controlled and run, and you are a slave. Everybody knows where we'll be on Monday morning at 8 o'clock, either in school or class or at the job. 
unless you have other means of of, of welfare. So uh, we're in a routine that is constant. You have to eat, so you've got to work to buy food, have a shelter, a home, whatever. And then some people are promoted if they go along with the, the agenda of the elites, the powerful elites, then they promote it. They get uh, a new house or they get a loan or they make a, a fantastic stock uh, move or something that gives them a lot of money. And the stock market is manipulated. It's not uh, something that just happens. It's not of chance. It's def- definite manipulation. So all of our life is controlled and ordered by persons that are not in front of us, that we do not know, cannot see, don't have access to, and mostly don't believe. A lot of people do not believe that this is possible. And all I'm saying is have an open mind, enough to look at the the cards on the table and see what kind of hand you're playing and what has been dealt to you. Because you know card games can be fixed. You know that uh, insider trading goes on. There's all kinds of situations happening in front of us, but we seem to be like not care, concerned. Oh, it it didn't happen to me, so it doesn't bother me. I don't don't have $100 billion. No, I'm not going to worry about it. All of this comes into play in our lives. But now... We are fast coming to an awakening among the people of this planet. That's 9 billion people uh, by the year 2020, which is a couple of months away. (laughs) We're going to have an interesting awakening, and there are things that will be revealed to the general public that they did not know. But whether they believe it or not is a a flip of the coin. Anyway, uh, is that good? That's wonderful, Claudie. Um, we have some new guests today. Is there anybody listening that would like to ask Claudie any questions about what she said? Well, maybe not. Um, you know, uh, I'm yeah, supposed to go. Yeah, maybe so. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, Claudie, uh, all of this yes. uh, Orion stuff and all of these aliens and Inky and the Queen, uh, they all began their round of, uh, or I'm asking you the question, did they begin their round of deception and, and bad doings uh, in the Iron Age, or did they start before that? Oh, way before that. Right now, uh, they're the extraterrestrial presence on this planet has been more than a million years. As I said, the an average lifetime, life cycle for an Orion is over 100,000 years. So they can institute a, a experiment and watch it through on a, on a species like us, which has a, a lifetime of maybe even less than 100 years. So they can see what will happen through generations if they try a program that benefits their agenda. So, yes, they've been here a long time. And all of this started when the queen took power, took the reign of power on her home world. And she was able to uh, enslave her own population. When they changed the the DNA codons so that the new Orions being born were uh, had no tail. That was a difference, a visible difference. And she had the capability to do that. Uh, and then she went to war uh, with the Syrian population to acquire more slaves. Remember, there are thousands of planets in our universe that are inhabited, not by humanoids, but by other creatures, and yet not all of them are capable of defending themselves. Like we were not capable of defending ourselves, even though the queen's son, Inky, changed our DNA and increased our intelligence so we could operate 
machinery in a mind and have have the ability to reproduce ourselves, this changed everything for everybody. And we right now are suffering, I'm going to use that word, suffering, the result of that uh, program that this Inky and Queen initiated. And, of course, they had more capability and knowledge and were able to do so much more than we are able to defend ourselves against. So that's how it started. So can I can I presume that uh, we've all incarnated through this process before now and have been here many times before. So in effect, we've all had an opportunity to be part of that whole scenario on the way to where we have come to this point. Yes, exactly. You see, the Orions are able to function in other frequencies or dimensions of life. I mean, like, you know, you can blow a dog whistle and a human won't hear it, but the dog will hear it because it has capabilities of hearing outside our range. Just like we cannot see at night, but a cat can see just fine at night because it has the capability to do that. One of the the, the capabilities the Orions have is the ability to to travel or transverse through different frequency or levels of of this universe. So they can manage their ability to control us from the astral level, which is one frequency or one level above the physical level. So that's why they have an edge that we don't have. Uh, They're able to do that themselves uh, and they've done it for thousands of years so that's how they have a one up on us but we're but becoming we have, more go ahead do we, have, we have a neutralizer though that's the new you yes when you sing the new you 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 like new you 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 it gives us a ability or capability of defending ourselves because the terrestrials, one cannot stand a child's laugh. It hurts them. It, it irritates them. They can't stand singing. That's why we sing the new you, you, you. It, it is most dis- disruptive to their, their, their sensibilities, their delicate uh, mental processes. So yes, there is a, a way for us to overcome them, but a lot of people that you talk to would not find that helpful information. In fact, it would make them very upset because, oh, you might be saying something against my God, my religion, whatever. Uh, and, and you go back, well, uh, your God and your religion are simply an extraterrestrial that's put on a show for you and you believe and told you to believe it and did some parlor tricks or, you know, holograms. They they know holograms backwards and forwards. They know stuff that Mr. Tesla was working on. Um, the, these are all kinds of things that came out of our history, like Pythagoras and Greek gods and Roman gods and so on and so forth, that uh, were giving us clues, but all of those clues have been um, squelched or dampened down so that we're not paying attention to them, just like the news today. Things may be happening in another country, but we're talking about the football game. Or how well, would it, some... Would it be reasonable, would it be reasonable to yet? ask... Would it be reasonable to state that if people would find something in their daily life it was um, a question, a question in their mind. They may have something that they don't like or don't agree with or think might be uh, opposite of what they've been told. Any little inclination, I don't care what it might be, if they were to focus on that, which is what most people don't want to focus on, and ask questions right. about that, they would get an insight into the real truth behind what they've been led to believe. And that would starts the process of them questioning everything they've been led to believe. And the new you will help move them into those levels of truth. 
exactly Oops. correct. Exactly correct. You hit the nail on the head. But how the extraterrestrials counter that is that on this planet, there are things called the HARP installation, uh, set up as a atmospheric experiment to um, no check the progress of our atmosphere in in what we have deposited into it from chemicals and poisons and so on and so forth. Uh, the extraterrestrials send out a nightly, hourly, maybe even uh, code to to keep us uh, un unalert. In other words, we will might know something for a minute and then it we forget it. They send out uh, codes or uh, commands to you will not remember this. And so some pe- people will have a brilliant thought, see a have a flash of insight uh, for you know a day or an hour, like talking to somebody at night at lunch or the, at the bowling league or you know going to a movie and saying, hey, you know we we should really look into this, and they can't because they don't remember. One of the key components that the extraterrestrials use in their bag of tricks to keep us uninformed is that they oh. send out a, a well, subcon. Go ahead. As we get those insights, if you write them down or read them into your phone recorder or whatever you might do, that'd be a real benefit to help you in your further understanding. Yes. Yes, they they've got to do we've got to do that more. But you know, you'll say, you know, I should have written that down, and then you you forget it because tomorrow we've got to go uh, get groceries or or have to get the car fixed or oil changed or something, and we forget. But three weeks later, we'll go. I know I had written that down somewhere, but I can't find it right now, because the extraterrestrials have the ability to. Uh, control time and frequency, they can come into our lives and out of our lives and we won't recognize it or know it. So it's an interesting adventure we're on. Claudia, I have another question for you. Um, Yes, sir. For our listening audience, um, a lot of people probably didn't know about the Orions and the Syrians and all that. Um, Are there any other... Um, aliens out there that you could tell us about. You know, there's, you know, one of the uh, some of the religions say that there's entities out there that are are v- very evil and they're trying to destroy the religion and and make them um, make it look like the religion is not true and and uh, they they're interfering and causing a lot of confusion within somebody's belief system, their religious belief system. That are that may be different than the the Orions or whatever. Are there any groups out there that 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 you could talk about that uh, have different do different things um, and interface with human beings on this planet? Yes, for sure. Um, I'm not really good on on all the different species, but I can tell you this for sure. The Orions uh, in this area took many people off of other planets and other species. That's why there are pictures of of humanoid-looking bird people, uh, humanoid-looking cat people, humanoid-looking gorilla people, all kind crocodile people, any kind of odd uh, statue that you see in history from history. Are, are they archaeologists discover that's a humanoid form, but is like a crocodile face or something? That's why we have stories in history of all these different species. Because I had mentioned before, Inky was a superior, brilliant geneticist. He could change, uh, take a, a sperm and an ovum over and uh, create a different creature. It, it, it was his hobby, his, his fun time, to see what kind of odd creatures could live and survive in, in different areas and worlds. 
so you you see the blue avian people. They had the head of a, a bird and body of a human. Uh, whole bunches of, of experiments were done on different people to see what was what could work and what didn't work. Um, when when we take the time to entertain the thought for just a few minutes, just look at both sides of the equation, see what makes sense is is the best way we can take care of ourselves, save ourselves. Our planet is being destroyed at the moment at an unbelievable rate. And a lot of people are going underground to live, to survive. And that's part of our human heritage and any creature, creature in the universe is to survive. And how do you do that? The best way you can figure. Uh, I mean, you know, the caveman survived, not as long as, as he would have liked, but then the, uh, the next group, uh, the next group of people coming into this planet uh, from, from the astral plane, they learned how to survive. And that's one of the things that gives an edge to the reptilians is that they can transverse between the physical plane existence and the astral plane existence. There's also a mental plane existence and one where our memories are stored, a causal plane of existence. And finally, a intuitive plane of existence where we get insights. And finally, there is a division between this lower frequency life and the higher frequency life where a lot of people live and can see us, but the primary law is you do not interfere with another person's free will. You have the free will to make a choice. The object of the game is to make the best choice you can make. But if you're given false information, kind of hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> 